Last week, I had the real pleasure of sitting down with Crystal Ball and Kyle Kalinske to discuss whether Americans really do need to just suck it up and vote for Joe Biden. Kalinske accused critics of the president of having Biden derangement syndrome. Let's watch. I, I didn't expect him to do any of it, and he did it. And this is something that but if I said early on, Biden's going to do nothing on student loan debt, everybody on the left would have been like, you're right, he's going to do nothing. Now he does five, six different things on it. And it's like people go, no, 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 doesn't count, doesn't count. I'm not saying what he's doing is perfect. Obviously, the best thing to do is to wipe it all out through executive order. And he has the authority to do that. That'd be the best thing to do. He didn't do that. But can we at least acknowledge the facts of what went down? And I see this rugged insistent. Honestly, it's like Biden derangement syndrome among some people on the left. And it's like Democrat derangement syndrome among some people on the left. The fact that we can't all agree very quickly that, well, obviously Democrats are not 10 times better than Republicans. They're 100 times better than Republicans. And even if you are somebody who's a purist and you're on the left, you can acknowledge a W in the instances you get it while still pushing for more. I mean, a perfect example is what's happening in Minnesota right now. Minnesota has a one seat Democrat majority. We got universal free school meals, legal weed, carbon free electricity by 2040, tax rebates for the working class up to $1,300 if you make under $150,000 a year, 12 weeks paid family leave, 12 weeks paid sick leave. They banned conversion therapy. They did red flag laws for guns. They did universal background checks for guns. They did automatic voter registration, public free college if you make under 80K, a ban on PFAs, which is the forever chemicals, $2.2 billion increase in K-12 school funding, sectoral bargaining, bargaining for nursing home workers. These things are all not little wins. They are huge wins. And I still see this insistence like we're back in 2016 or something where people are like, nope, Democrats and Republicans are either equally bad or actually jujitsu move, Republicans are the lesser evil. And I think it's idiotic. It's doomerist, it's nihilist, it's people who are refusing to acknowledge reality and they'd rather narrative hump all day talking about Democrats are so bad, Democrats are so bad, Democrats are so bad, but oh yeah, I'm a leftist. And I, I promise that I did <laughs> respond. People really like to circulate that clip in particular on the internet because I took a deep breath because in my subjective view, that all that he said was non-responsive to the point that I was trying to make before he started going uh, on that I, I, dialogue. We, well, is that we have you next responding? I think. Oh, I'm not. I'm not sure what clips have been chosen, <laughs> but we can we can keep rolling the clip. Here's a little bit more of the debate. If it comes down to World War III versus that litany of um, achievements that you just articulated, there were people that, with the hindsight of living in the nuclear holocaust, would say, well, I guess that Trump actually was a better president. But I don't, I don't want Who's to more know likely to happened. get us World War III, but though? I, I definitely I think it's Trump. I definitely think it's Trump more likely to get us World War III. I don't want to know what people think. You disagree I want to know. I want to know what you think. I, Do you I, think I, that I, that's accurate? Because I, to I me, I look be. at the we record. Don't, we don't know until history happens what history is going to do. I wouldn't have expected that under Biden, we would have gotten in the middle of this war with Ukraine and Russia. I would not. That wasn't on my bingo card either. Yeah, but we know that Trump was actually more hawkish towards Russia. than He built like, up on NATO's border. Obama he put was, troops on NATO's border. We know what he did with Iran. We know he said he was going to get on Afga Afghanistan. Biden actually did it. So we can we can evaluate these two claims. This, this, that we shouldn't believe anything that Donald a, Trump says about Ukraine. A, a toxic this is literally just a vote blue no matter who convers a lesser two equals conversation. No, it's a let's discuss the facts and how you weigh them conversation. Here, 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 how about this? Biden can be 10 times better than Trump. Let's concede that for the sake of argument. I'm not voting for him. So what was, in my view, very frustrating, and, and again, I, I'm so happy that we had this conversation because I do think that it unpacked a lot of the core of the division in the left right now, which is that there are people who believe that Trump presents an existential harm and that therefore, no matter what Biden does, and people will, will push back and say, well, Biden has done great, so it's not about lowering the bar for Biden. But if you watch the first five minutes of the conversation, the stakes became very clear. If you believe that Donald Trump is an existential threat, then singing Biden's accomplishments is irrelevant. And that's what I was trying to get across to Kyla. In that instance, it's like, it, it's not that it, it's not that anybody is trying to minimize that Biden, of course, has done good things. And as I say elsewhere in the clip, I can also say Obama did good things. Everyone does something good. Nixon made Earth Day. Like everyone does something good. And I'm not saying that to diminish anything. Right. But that's not what is motivating people's decisions at the polls. What the the, the way the conversation is framed is that because of Trump presenting an existential threat, not because Biden is good, but because Trump presents an existential threat, you have to vote for the Democrat. And I asked them at the beginning, I said, let's concede, like when I say let's concede that Biden is better, I, I mean it for the sake of argument, Biden is better. I, fine, Biden is better. 20 times, a thousand times. When I, when I said he's 10 times better, but, uh, Kyle later in the conversation goes, okay, but he's a thousand times better. All right, when does it end? <laughs> let's go, he's a million times better. Okay, <laughs> fine. Does that mean then 
When, it, that you're, you're willing to withhold your vote for a Democratic candidate the next cycle when it's not Trump? If it were Ron DeSantis, would you say that it's, oh, now we can start having a conversation about withholding our vote? No. Yeah. If it was Did you bring Thomas that Wally? up? Because yes. that would, it, it, that would yes, instantly course. provoke the same reaction. In fact, all the people saying, not all of the, I don't know if Crystal and Kyle would say that. I don't know them that well. I don't watch them very often. Would they, they would say that, um, they're already doing, like, mainstream Democratic people, at least, are already doing that Ron DeSantis is worse than Trump. Yes, and You've I, I heard that actually, argument. I think that's actually true, because I think he's more effective, and Trump got in his own way sometimes. Remember when he mm -hmm. created a constitutional, an unconstitutional hook right. to, to, to strike down his Muslim ban, because he just said out loud, right. we're banning them because they're Muslim. But, but the point <laughs> is, that it contradicts the idea that this is a once-off, you just have to support right. the Democrat because of Trump. Of course right. it's not going to be like so that. So what, what I had hoped, and what I hope the three of us are able to have a conversation about going forward, because I hope this is just the beginning of something, is what does the off-ramp look like? If you don't believe in vote boom men are who. And I, and I should say that this conversation was sparked. I reached out to Crystal to discuss this because for the previous week, there had been a viral clip going around of Crystal from Breaking Points in which she had articulated basically the argument that she's making in this debate. But people pointed out that it seemed to contrast with a position that she had taken earlier, a year or so ago in radars or uh, in the version of um, their radars right. over on Breaking Points. Uh, and people were trying to figure out what had changed. And, you know, I'm still a little bit unclear on that personally. And I just want to be really clear. I, I, I at no point disagree with the value of the NLRB appointments and what they really do bring to uh, labor's ability to agitate for change in the United States of America. I strongly believe that the path to the kind of more uh, socialist future that I advocate for, one where workers' rights are primary over profits, is going to come through labor power. I don't, I didn't disagree with a single thing that Crystal said. I think the difference of opinion has to be about what our priorities are. And my personal priority is ending the corporate duopoly. And the only way to do so, per Kyle's own statements in the debate, is to advocate for third, third parties and also ranked choice voting. And a point that I made, I was thinking of you, Robbie, is that the Libertarian Party has been perhaps the most effective advocate for ranked choice voting in the United States because unlike the Green Party, which has similar interests as the Libertarian Party, it's much better funded. It's because it takes corporate money and the Green Party doesn't, <laughs> but regardless, it is much better funded. So to me, there is a real tangible benefit to voting for a third party candidate so they can get 5% of the vote in federal matching funds and so can start to limit that yeah. effort to getting ranked choice voting and break the duopoly. If, uh, if viewers aren't aware, longtime viewers I'm sure are aware, Crystal Ball was the former host of this show. Kyle Klinsky is her husband. They're recently married. You were at the wedding, yes, I believe. Yes, I was. You're f friendly with them. And, yes. and, and Crystal, uh, I think, was known for, including in her role as the host of the show during the previous Bernie campaign as a major supporter and booster of Bernie Sanders, not someone I would have necessarily expected to be hearing from in a very, you know, we, we really do got a rally behind Biden. Um, it, obviously, the conversation that you and I have about this is different because I, I do actually ob object to and disagree with most of the things that Kyle uh, was listing as achievements because I disagree with those policies. Um, that's probably not even worth getting into. But I do take issue. I don't know how much, to what extent you took issue with the idea that Trump um, represents some unique threat of World War III. I, look, I, Trump, I wish Trump was, was, was my, yes, I think we zoomed in on it. I, I think Trump did not follow through on the uh, the less interventionist foreign policy he articulated to nearly the extent uh, I would have wanted him to. Um, that said, I mean, so you, look, the things he's saying about Ukraine now are much saner than yeah. the things the Biden administration is doing about it. Yeah. Um, you, you know, look, you want to, I, I, yeah. I argue that he's like his clumsy finger is by some nuclear holocaust button. I don't, I don't know how much that holds water when Biden is, 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 you know, sending cluster bombs to a war zone that he right. says is going to go on forever. I, yeah. I, I, I kind of object, having thought about this more over the weekend, I really do object to the, I think it's it's the wrong question, and I think it's kind of a, I'm not saying anybody is attempt, as like trying to be manipulative, right. but it is a strategically very manipulative question. Um, who is worse, 
Biden or Trump? Who's more likely to cause nuclear war? Yeah. If, if I presented you with a pile of poop and a pile of mama and said, which one of these do you want for dinner? Do you really want to enter into an esoteric conversation about which is the less appetizing meal? The whole point is that we should be united around the common goal of getting rid of these two bad options, of getting rid of the corporate duopoly. And when you ask those kinds of questions, it has the effect of breaking up what should be a coalition that's charged principally with getting those corporate bodies out of power. And I saw a similar kind of issue emerge over the weekend or into last week um, because very popular uh, comedian podcast host Jamie Dore interviewed Cornell West, someone who's been very sympathetic of a, a Green Party voter, things like that. And they ended up getting into a tussle about whether or not um, kind of COVID ma mandates versus um, uh, fighting racism and white supremacy is the most important thing. And again, that feels like a trap. Many people believe that COVID mandates are very important and, and not having authoritarian mandates are very important, and also think that racism is bad and important. If you're in the business of going around trying to make voters have the exact same, not just broad priorities, but rank them in the exact order that you rank them in, you are doing the work of busting up any coalition that could possibly be in power. It's op work. Intentionally or unintentionally, that is op work. That is like CIA applauding from the sidelines level work. Mm -hmm. If you can agree that these are your priorities, big ticket items, being anti-authoritarianism, being anti-white supremacy, being anti-mandate, being anti any of the tools that the, uh, the, the establishment has been used to break up working class coalitions since, the t since time immemorial, then you need to say, we're all gonna fight on all of those things together. Maybe you are a child and you care about child care a little bit more than you care about health care. Maybe you have a sick parent so you care about health care a little bit more than the military. Maybe you have a, a brother serving or a sister serving, so you care about the military industrial complex more than you care about housing rights. But the whole point is that you should be trying to get people under a big tent, not nitpicking about which thing is worse, and then busting up the coalition on that basis. And I really do think, you know, there are many people who are going to say Brianna is indifferent to Donald Trump because of the arguments that I was making on the show. A lot of people were making that argument on the internet. The internet doesn't matter. What matters is that we're able to see through rhetorical strategies that have the effect of making us forget that we are aligned as a left community on getting out the corporate duopoly. And the only question we should be asking ourselves and debating on is what is the strategy that is most likely effective, not at beating Trump, that is not my personal priority, but at beating the entire system itself. All right, one last question for yeah. you. So you took a day off from <laughs> this show, from our enjoyable, always enjoyable conversations to go do that. Yes. Yeah, so no, no, that's not true. I took the day off. No, I know. I just, I just say it seems like it wasn't very relaxing. Sometimes, like you know, because we uh, some, some days are more argumentative than others. We've had a lot of argumentative days lately. No, <laughs> like yeah, uh, no. your 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 fate in life. You you <laughs> cross some gypsy woman, and they said you will you will have an unpleasant encounter with a very blonde man every day for the rest of your life. That does that does, doesn't mean what is no. I, to be for the record, I took Wednesday off to do Russell Brand yes. because he's in England. He's they're strict about the for time sure. that they record and they do it live. And hopefully the idea is he's planning to come on our show too. So it benefits the hill that I, I went I ahead totally and I totally understand. And because I had the day off, I went ahead and scheduled a bunch of stuff so that I wouldn't just be wasting the time. All right. Well, everybody should check out the rest of that very spicy oh, exchange. And, and to be clear, an hour of it is free, available both on Kyle's channel, my channel, and all over the internet on, on uh, Bad Faith Podcast is the name of my show. Because you can also subscribe at patreon.com slash badfaithpodcast for the last 45 minutes, which I think cooler heads prevail and we do 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 less talking past each other so i do recommend people go and listen to the whole thing more rising right after this